Living in Ica Blue is all about what does this lake look like in 20 years? That's really our guiding principle. Um, it is a, an amazingly diverse ecosystem. It's a huge lake. It's 19,000 cubic kilometers of water. It's a phenomenally large amount of water. 17% of the world's fresh water, over 300 endemic species. Um, it is pristine, but that you know, that's, that's, that's the reality now. What's the reality in 20 years? And what we are trying to build is a, a business and a model and a system where the ecosystem can continue to flourish, but also the people and the local communities that live around the lake and can, ex can get value out of the lake so that they can flourish as well and, and build their lives. And the key to all of that is creating a aquaculture industry, which is coming, aquaculture is building, which is based on the ecosystem which exists and not importing you know, invasive species and different things from the outside and really matching together the environmental outcomes with the economic outcomes of the communities that live around the lake to, to create a future that looks, that in 20 years, looks like it looks today without you know, just this being, we only get one chance at this, at this lake. And we don't want this just to be another story of a pristine environment which was ruined by people in their quest for more money. We want this to really be a, a shiny example of where we were able to use what we've learned in other areas and develop this in a sustainable fashion, which is a, which is a positive outcome for the ecosystem and for the communities around the lake. kila siku lazima ifanyike operation ya kujua samaki waliopo katika ile keji leo wana uhai gani wana afya gani lakini pia tunafanya operation ya kukagua zile nyavu ili kuhakikisha kwamba kama kuna holes yoyote kuna tundu lolote lipo katika neti naweza kuzibu haraka sana hii samaki wasiweze kutoroka na kuingia ziwani kingine kuhakikisha samaki kila siku wanakula kwa sababu samaki ile ongezeke uzito anahitaji kula kwa hiyo hiyo cha kufanya ni kuhakikisha samaki wale kwa siku tunawalisha milo mitatu kwa ile milo mitatu lazima niahikishe inalishwa kwa siku kingine kama kuna samaki wanakufa pia tunahakikisha tunawatoa kwa sababu samaki anapokuwa amekufa anaweza kuambukiza samaki wengine mshasiku akaugua wengi na wale ambao wanaumwa tunawatibu samaki tunawatibu kama hiyo binadamu changamoto kubwa tuliyonao kwa wakulima wengi ambao wanataka kuingia katika hii sekta wanafanya pasipo kufuata utaalamu cha kwanza lazima maji yawe safi na kiwango kile cha kutosha cha pili lazima kuwe na mbegu bora ya ufugaji wa samaki wakulima wengi wanaanza ufugaji lakini mbegu wanazitukua kutoka mitoni mbegu ambazo tayari zishadumaa haziwezi kukua hata kwa namna moja au nyingine. Ya tatu ni chakula bora. Wa wakulima wengi wanaingia kuna ufugaji lakini wanalisha unakuta wanalisha ugali huu wa kawaida, wanalisha kumbikumbi wadudu, wanalisha majani. Mshasiku samaki ya kui kwa sababu wapati zile eh, tunaita essential nutrients ambazo samaki anatakiwa asipate zote tano, protein, carbohydrate, vitamin, mineral na fati. Kwa hizi zote hizi lazima ununue chakula bora. Samaki akizipata hizi ndio mezi sita hadi saba ndio anafikisha ule uzito sana ambao anatakiwa uweze kumvuna. We're actually quite lucky that um, the water quality in this lake is so good that our fish, the, the, the Tanganyika tilapia, has a very clean taste. So we had a customer just the other day who said, oh, I don't like that tilapia because it's, it's muddy. And what she was referring to is that a lot of tilapia is grown in ponds. And a, and a pond is obviously quite shallow, it has an earth base, it can taste a little muddy. We said, look, try the fish, see what you think. And she was blown away by how clean the taste is. And that's all thanks to the environment that we have here. Yeah, all of our consumption is, is, is domestic and it's quite local at the moment. You know, we're, we're still quite small in terms of how, what our plans are. We're producing between 30 and 40 tonnes a year. Um, we hope to expand that to something like 500 tonnes by the end of next year. When we're at 500 tons, we'll be certainly selling into Dar es Salaam um, and all probably all through the middle of the country to Bora, Morogoro, Dodoma. Um, but for now, it's very much local consumption. I say that, I say local, I also mean sort of regional, which is Congo and Burundi. So we're here on the lake, they're just across the water, they're our neighbors. So people also buy fish from us and then they will take them to Burundi or Congo across the lake. Um, but this is, Export is possible in the future, but this business is about 
domestic consumption. Um, and, you know, so our, our customers are people who just buy one or two fish for their dinner, but then they're also people who buy 100, 100 kilograms of fish and transport them to a local town, a town two hours away, selling Kusulu, selling Uvinza, but are all just into the, into the domestic market. But it's very, very fortuitous that our fish that we're producing are just actually delicious. We want to use that reputation that Lake Tanganyika has as a pristine environment to really draw people towards the fish um, and to grow the to grow the industry for the local communities around. Our cages are pretty basic, but they're but they're also structurally quite sound. So um, from a technological point of view, they're not that um, advanced. They're a sort of a good a, a good. Um, balance between a strong cage, a sturdy cage that can survive in the lake and, and but also making it accessible that we can produce them ourselves, we weld them together ourselves um, and they are a cage that other people can copy and other people can use um, which is sort of the whole ethic of the company is that this is a demonstration, this is a commercial company but it's also a, uh, it wants to be a leader and we, we want to show how this can develop and how other people can replicate um, what we're doing and have their own success. We need to be price competitive, otherwise, you know, the customer's not gonna choose to buy, you know, Tanganyika Blues fish. So our, our, our competition is wild catch, but also as we expand to Dar es Salaam and other places, our competition becomes uh, frozen imports from China um, and from other countries. So cost competitiveness is key, and you, you achieve that by running a a lean operation, but also by having a, a high quality product that the market wants to respond to. Niseme kwa wasiana labda wengi, wanafikiria labda kazi ya uvuvi, ni kuingia ziwani, labda kuenda kuvua samaki, apana. Kazi ya uvuvi, ni labda kuhusiana na ufugaji, ni kazi ambao ni nyepesi, na mana natakua ujitoyo mwenye kwa mwe wako, unafanya kazi, kama mfano mimi hapa, Nivo kwa nakuja mala kwanza, naona kama kazi ni ngumu, kama nini. Lakini mwishu wa siku ni mezoea, saibi naona kazi ni nyepesi. Mambo, kwanza jambo la kwanza, toka nimefika, kufanya hii kazi ya uh, ufugaji wa samaki. Labda ile kuingia kwenye pondi, mdada unaingia labda kwenye maji, kwenye pondi, labda kuchukua samaki, labda mnavuna, au mnataka labda kuatolea mayaya, au kuchukua vifalanga, ile kazi ya kuingia, unajidumukiza kwenye matope, ni kwa naona kama kazi ngumu. Mana ni kuwa sija zoea eh. Kwa, kwa saibi ni mezoea, pia kazi nyingine labda kubeba mifuko ya chakula, unakuta mdada kama mimi na beba kilo shinatano za chakula, inakuwa ni vigumu kwa angu. Pia kitu kingine labda kupanda kwenye keji kule juu, mwana mke na ogopa kama nitaeza ni kazama, kwa unakuwa sija amini. Kwa saibi na jiamini naeza kazi zote na sifanya. Mtu yote anayependa kujifunza kusiana na ufugaji wa samaki either kwenye mwabwawa kwa maana ya pondi au kwenye keji kwa maana ya vizimba chuo vinapatikana pale feta fisheries education and training agency vinapatikana Kigoma pia hata Mwanza kipo na Bagamoyo kipo Kwa ushauri wangu mimi ni muhimu sana kujifunza kuogelea maana unaweza kupata ajali kule amna kukuokoa unaweza kujisaidia mwenyewe kujiokoa mwenyewe kuogelea mpaka nchi kavu meno tangu kubwa ni kuja kufanya biashara kama nitakuwa na mtaji wa kutosha naweza nikaanzisha mambo ya ufugaji kwa sababu ni kitu ambacho nimekisomea na nakipenda nimelizika kuwa nacho kwa maisha ya baadaye The original idea of the business was actually built around a cold chain. So there are no fridges in Kigoma, for example, as in, you know, there's fridges for our Coca-Colas, but there's no fridges for meat or fish or dairy. So the original idea was that we would install a cold chain in Kigoma, where fishermen, when they land their catch, they can, they can preserve their catch for a couple of days. Because at the moment, everyone needs to sell their catch either fresh on that day or they smoke it or they dry it. And when you do those two things, it loses a lot of value. Once, we, when we looked at that business, we, we realized that the catch, the wild catch was just unsustainable. It's been declining every year. Um, 
due to overfishing, due to sort of um, improved technologies of fishing, using smaller nets or using more powerful lights or more powerful engines, which has just caused the ca catch to decline a lot, um, which has a terrible impact on the environment. You know, like we are destroying these fishing stocks, but it also it's terrible for the long-term health of the, the communities around Kigoma that are supported on the lake. Um, you know, people's children will not necessarily be fishing in the same way as they are now because the, the catch just isn't going to be there. So once we realise that, we realise that the future is, is aquaculture. The future isn't these wild fisheries which are, which are regulated but poorly enforced. Um, so that's when we looked at, okay, well, how can we build something which future-proofs the lake for 20 years? How can we make sure that this ecosystem still exists? The wild catch is unsustainable, it's declining, it's a dying industry, unfortunately. We still have all these people, they're gonna need fish, they're gonna need protein. How can we, how can we do something that's gonna build for the future a bit more? Um, and so then we started looking at oh, how can we also do that in, a, in an environmentally sustainable fashion? And that's where the, the native species aquaculture concept really came in, which is interesting that it, it came from looking at the wild catch and seeing how unsustainable that was and then reconsidering how we can sort of reimagine what the what the future industry could look like, given that that one was declining. So what, what do we have that, that can come in its place and actually grow in a better way than, than the wild catch, as, catch industry was previously? A few of the things that we do to ensure a high quality, high quality fish that goes to the, to the, to the market is a lot of, we put a lot of effort into very gentle handling of the fish. So not, not overstocking your cage. If you overstock your cage, that means too many fish in the one area. They get stressed, they get diseases, they get deformed. They can, if they, if they are mentally stressed, they start biting and they can lose fins. And that, of course, you can see that in the final product. And that's not attractive to the consumer. That's not what they want to see. They want to see a nice, whole, shiny fish. Um, so the, the main elements are like use good fish feed, which is going to be healthy for the fish and healthy for the, for the end consumer and have good management practices to make sure that your fish are growing in, the, in clean water, in, with plenty of space, um, when, in not a stressful environment, and, and, and try and reduce the, the stress on the fish the whole way through the process. Here at Tanganyika Blue, we, we breed our own fish. So we have taken uh, what's called broodstock. So that's, the, you know, that's native fish from the lake, from the, the Tanganyika tilapia. Um, we have our own um, small ponds where we have a certain number of male fish and female fish and, and then so we produce our own fingerlings, which is what baby fish are called. Um, so all of it is, is the product of Lake Tanganyika. And the number one thing for that really is species choice. Physically, what fish have you got in your cages? Do they fit with the local environment? Are they, are they known to the other, you know, the other biodiversity in the lake, the ecosystem? Um, and if you introduce something, then you have a higher risk of unintended consequences from introducing. But if you're using something which is native to the ecosystem, then you're really, really minimizing the risk factor of having any sort of negative externalities from your, from your fish farm. Water depth is a really important factor in, in all fish farms. Um, and a lot of the fish farms that have, let's say, localized environmental issues. So that could be fish death in their own farm, that could be um, fish death or, or, or water quality issues in the surrounding area. A lot of that is to do with um, farming in too shallow water or farming in an in too enclosed environment. So your water might be quite deep, your water might be 10 or 15 meters deep, but you're in the mouth of a river or you're in a cove, you're in somewhere where it's a, doesn't have good water flow, doesn't have good water cycling. Um, and Lake Victoria, unfortunately, is quite a, well, for fish farming, it's quite a shallow lake. So there's lots of areas where people are in five, seven, 10 meter depth, which is really pushing it in terms of um, flushing the cages, keeping the water moving through the, and, and avoiding nutrient buildup around the cage. Um, quite luckily, Lake Tanganyika is a very deep lake um, and it gets deep quite quickly. So it's only 60 kilometers across. So you don't need to go very far offshore to be getting into 20, 30 meter water depth which is a very good amount of water below the, the depth of the cage. The cage might be seven to 10 meters deep. Then you've got another 20 meters of water below that. 
water moves through that water column and really flushes the whole system. So you're not getting that nutrient buildup in a very localized sense. And that is really important from, a, from a, the health of your farm, but also the health of the, the surrounding ecosystem where, where you're located. Fish, fish feed is one of the most important elements in a fish farm. Um, it's, it's as much as 70 to 80% of, of your cost base of any fish farm is goes into fish feed. When the, when the feed arrives on your farm, you can do simple things such as a, a float test. So it's important that, that the feed floats. And what that means is then that when you throw the feed into the cage, it stays on the surface until the fish eat all of the feed and it doesn't sink through to the bottom. And if it sinks through to the bottom, and through the cage, you're losing money because that's feed that the fish aren't eating, but you're also increasing the, the nutrient base underneath your cages in a way that is unsustainable. So if, the, if it floats, that's a good sign that it's good fish feed. But at the end of the day, the way that you know if you have high quality feed is if the fish are responding to that feed. So if, if, they, if you feed them and you, and you come back two weeks later and you fed them the right amount and they've put on weight, you know you've got high quality feed if they haven't put on any weight, then you might find out that the guys put in 20% sawdust just to sort of bulk out the feed and you're not getting anything you want. And you need to be doing that constantly because fish feed is a technical process. And even, you know, we could get good feed this week. We order some more again in a month. The production line in the factory has been a bit different. You know, some managers have been off sick. The feed quality might, be this, might not be the same that next month. Kigoma is quite a remote region in Tanzania. It's a long way from the sort of center of power and money and stuff in, in Dar es Salaam. And people can look at that as a negative. But also it is, in some ways, if you flip it on its head, it means that things which are near Kigoma are away from everything else as well. So it's actually an opportunity. And so that's one of the elements behind our fish farm is that we're about local consumption. And we can, we can out-compete people coming from Lake Victoria or from, one, or from China with their fish because we are here. And if we produce a good quality product, people will respond and people will buy it because it's the right economic choice for them and their family. So over the next 12, 12 to 18 months, we uh, will be developing a, an, an expansion site for Tanganyika Blue. So we, we've managed to some, secure some land just south of Kigoma town, um, about 45 minutes away, which is a beautiful piece of land right on the lake. Um, and it's there which we're gonna develop the, the full facility, um, the full native species aquaculture facility for Lake Tanganyika. In addition to the, the commercial farm, which we hope to scale to 500 tonnes by the end of, the next, end of next year, with, a, with an aim of 3,000 tonnes of production, uh, hopefully another 18 months after that. We also want to have this as a, as a working demonstration farm, um, almost a Shamba Darasa where people can come and they can stay on the farm for two weeks and they can do short courses in hatchery management or pond management or cage management, the different stages of you know, fish handling, fish processing, so they can really get a sense of what, a, what an operating farm looks like. So taking, taking the, the lessons out of the classroom and actually doing it on a farm. And so we will have people, we hope to have people come and stay for, as I say, one or two weeks to do a short course. They can come from Dar es Salaam, they can come from our neighbors across the lake, wherever it is, to come and see what actually is involved in, in aquaculture. And if it's really something for them, and if it is, how can they learn some practical knowledge to go back to their their home region and, and, and develop it really fully themselves as well. Uh, as of today, we have about 15 employees. Uh, we expect that number to grow to uh, something close to 100 by the end of the next year. And then as our farm grows, you know, as it, as it continues to grow, we think that when we get to 3,000 uh, tons of production, we'll be employing something like 500 people. Kwanza kwa sisi, kwanza tukua watu kwanza, kufanya mladi wa samaki naweza nikasema kwa kigoma nzima pia kutoka tunazalisha wenyewe vifaranga na tunawakuza hivyo hivyo vifaranga na kukuza na kuuza e, fursa kwanza ndo kama hivyo nilisema mwanzo kutakuwa na vibarua 
kwa hiyo wenyeji pia watapata nafasi ya kupata kazi kwetu tunapoongeza cage kuna mambo ya kulisha samaki kuna zile movement za sema kama za shamba zinakuwa nyingi sana kwa sisi kama sisi peke yetu hatuwezi kufanya our cages here at, behind me they're in about 12 to 15 meters of water which is about the minimum that you want to have your cages in the the deeper the water the the easier it is to to flush through the system to be turning over the the water in the cages which is important for the amount of oxygen that that are in the cages which are, which the fish need to survive um in terms of you know moving the the nutrient build up in those cages moving those through the through the system at our new site uh we have the cages will be in about 30 meters of water which is the recommended perfect depth for aquaculture any deeper than that your um you don't get any more benefit in terms of water cycling in terms of flushing through the cages in terms of water water quality in fact you just have more cost because you need deeper anchors you need bigger chains the cages are more exposed to to the elements the cages we have here at the moment they're made from galvanized steel floating on barrels they're 6 m by 6 m squares um when we increase the production we're actually going to move to circular cages and they 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 those cages are made from HDPE pipe so 6 inch HDPE pipe, pipe which is very buoyant so those cages those cages float from the creation of the pipe which is the the barrier of the of the cage um so there and that's much bigger that's about four times the size of these cages so we will continue to use these cages as the for the the mid-sized fish say 5 grams to 30 grams then when the fish get a bit bigger we transfer them to the large cages the grow out cages where they go from 30 grams up to say 350 grams um at the moment we have nine cages here uh we at the new site we will have 30 cages like this but then we will have 60 large cages as well uh additionally which will able us to scale the production um again we're very blessed at the new site we have a lot of space so if we need to put in more cages that's not an issue if we need to if we need to keep growing if the demand is there then we can we can add more cages every 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 month if we need to Lake Tanganyika the four sharing countries they have uh they are being governed by Lake Tanganyika convention which was signed a uh, few decades ago whereby uh the countries are supposed they are obliged to make sure that um uh there is no introduction of new species in the lake they have to maintain the existence of the endemic species for that one to happen obviously anything which needs to be done within Lake Tanganyika basin need to be uh need to be originated from the basin itself whoever wants to do anything in the lake it has first of all they have to work under the umbrella of Lake Tanganyika authority and as an institute we are working under that umbrella uh the institute which under the minister of fisheries and livestock Uh we're very we're very lucky that we live and work in a really stunning natural setting. Uh and our new site is second to none for that sort of I mean it's just it's just a beautiful place to be. Um so we will also in addition to you know the warehouse and the and the ice machine and all the sort of technical things that we need we we also have the chance to to build a really lovely environment built environment down there. It's a little bit far out of town so a lot of our employees will be living there. So we need also need to make it a nice place to live. Um luckily, yeah, look the sun sets every evening behind the Congolese mountains. Uh we have enough land where we can keep our our industrial side on one thing and we and we have our staff housing and recreation areas and places to, you know, have communal dinners and 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 relax in the evenings separate from that while overlooking the lake and the mountains. Um and we want to so when I mentioned before about people coming for short courses We also want them to have a nice time if they if they if they have a positive feeling about about the lake and about about aquaculture and they have an enjoyable couple of weeks they're much more likely to go back and have success. We're at the beginning of this journey and you know we always talk about at Tanganyika Blue we always talk about a 20 what what does the lake look like in 20 years and that's really how we how we're looking at this. So we've been going for a little while we've managed to get started things are things are working well and 
but this is just the beginning and um, I'm really excited for the next one year, five years, 20 years to, to develop this project to, to sort of be able to share Lake Tanganyika and the, and the, and the native species of, of tilapia with, with Kigoma and, and with Tanzania and with the world because uh, yeah, it's really, it's really a really special place and we really look forward to, to being able to develop the full potential that's out here.